The Man Who Couldn't Cook by Phil Spencer. Mm. One fine morning. Um, we're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, a very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will, um, that kind of make being Xbox hard. The end. Whoa, 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 Miss Lippy. The part of the story I don't like is that Phil, Phil gave up looking for games after an hour. He didn't put gameplay up or anything. He just sat on the porch like a goon and waited. That little boy's got to think you got a company. You got a responsibility. If you cancel lost, you don't cry for an hour, then call it quits. You get your ass out there and you find that f***ing game. No question about it, Microsoft's been taking more L's recently than I've been taking drugs. But Brett, what about Hi-Fi Rush? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi-Fi Rush was a certified banger that I beat on Game Pass and enjoyed a lot. But goddamn, if you think Hi-Fi Rush is enough to carry Xbox for the next few months, you're out of your mind. But to be fair, the same goes for Sony. Hey. I don't know why the internet pretends like PlayStation's always dropping banger after banger. It's more like a sprinkling bangers. The Sony I knew back in my day during the PS2 era would have pumped out the entire PS4 library in one year. It's fair to say good content is not that frequent. I mean, it's so bad that when Xbox, Nintendo, or PlayStation do drop one good game, we have to savor it because we know the rest of the year will be full of broken, unfinished games. From Cyberpunk to Battlefield 2042, to Forspoken, to Halo Infinite, to Gran Turismo 7, to Pokemon Sword and Shield, it's honestly devastating to see that the industry can't even compete with itself from five years ago. But you know what the worst part about all of this is? Even though these games were rushed out unfinished, practically broken and unplayable, or just hovering slightly below mid, they still fly off the shelves and make the gaming industry a lot of money more now than ever before. It doesn't matter that they're not quality games, and it doesn't matter that a lot of these titles were delayed multiple times because they still released like shit. Maybe Phil Spencer's onto something. Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. Which is what the subject of today's video is. Philly cheesesteak spender is big meds and super salty. And not a single Xbox guy watching this video right now can deny it. Sit your ass down. I'm gonna do what none of you have the balls to do and that's roast your homie, Phil Spencer. Seeing as how Colt Eastwood and Paris don't have the balls to do it, you should be thankful you got me. He's the only one who could have stopped. Phil Spencer. Yes. For Tanga. Was a hero. I just couldn't see it. For God's sake, Phil Spencer's had the same salty, grumpy ass face since the Game Awards, and it has not changed. And you would be out of your mind to say he spoke with full confidence in that interview that just released. We are looking at the face of a man with a lot of pressure and his job quite possibly on the line. Hardware and game sales down, Activision Blizzard purchase, blocked for another 10 years, multiple delays, Redfall coming out like trash, consumers worried they're gonna be stuck with 30 FPS on games, and it's only the fifth month of 2023, dear God. Unfortunately, the memes are true. Phil Spencer's the man who simply cannot cook. Well, actually, no, he can cook, but they're very limited dishes. He may be able to make a spaghetti but he can't make you a full course meal. Gabagool, over here. Whatever abilities Phil Spencer has are best used elsewhere in the company, because being the head of Xbox should require somewhat of a spine, which Phil Spencer does not have. Yes, Cutie likes to play Forza with his fans on Game Pass. Yeah, unlike Jim Ryan, he actually plays video games and talks to a lot of people. But so what? That doesn't deliver results? You think sitting down and having dinner with Colt Eastwood is gonna make the brand any better? Xbox influencers have put more effort into damage controlling for the brand, 
then Phil Spencer has put effort into giving them quality games. There's no other easy way to put it, but to all these Xbox influencers are enablers for Phil Spencer. Stay away from them, Philly. I don't own an Xbox, but I can sure as hell give you way better criticism. If you're dating an ugly fat chick, I will tell you, Phil Spencer. Colt Eastwood would probably sit there and be like, no, she's pretty bad, trust me. She's a 10 out of 10. I'm not that type of guy. I'd be like, dump that bitch. If you had flown me out to try out Redfall, I would have done what you should have done, and that's this. What the hell is you got? Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! Oh! Slap every single goddamn member of that team and fire them. How would you not be upset about this? And yet they put out a more polished timed exclusive on your competitor's console? And this is what they give you under your ownership? You cannot be this pathetic. But sadly, when he sat down for his interview yesterday, he proved that he is indeed that pathetic. Now, before you hit unsubscribe, just keep in mind, capping for Phil Spencer this hard will never get you to get a woman's pussy wet. So pick now, what do you want? Phil Spencer's approval, or do you want pussy? No, I'm a little worried about being a slut. Uh, what can we learn? How can we get better? Uh, I, one thing I'll fight is kind of uh, what went wrong. There's clearly quality and execution things that we can do. But one thing I won't do is push against creative aspirations of our teams. Then a lot of people will say, hey, you've got teams, teams know how to do one kind of game. Just force them to go do the one kind of game that they have a proven track record for. Um, and I'm just not a believer in that. Maybe that means I'll, I'll under deliver for some of our fans out there. But when a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like obsidian wants to do grounded when tango wants to go do hi-fi when everybody probably thought they were doing evil the within three um i want to give the teams the creative platform to go and push their ability push their aspirations um, but i also need to have a, a great selection of games that are continue to come that surprise and delight our fans and we under delivered on that and for that i apologize it's um sorry all right phil come, come over here C come here come here come here no come here come here no come here come here i said get over here okay good listen the hell microsoft isn't a charity you're not here to make developers dreams come true these people are on a payroll you think microsoft likes hearing that you want to make people's dreams come true are you in the business of making money or friends it's about giving the consumers and the people what they want if they want a new conquer's bad for a day your response isn't sorry the team wants to make sea of thieves i'm just not a firm believer in being a boss and making people do what i ask you're really going to continue putting food on the table for them when they can't even bring you some profit this hands-off approach of allowing the devs to do whatever the hell they want isn't working well at least not on the triple a side of things for you phil spencer seems to be the type of boss that'll just let people do crack in the office because it'll help them with their creativity and it'll keep them happy you didn't buy these studios so that they could operate independently free of your demands i'm not saying to force all of these guys into a crunch i'm just saying to slap a bitch when it's time but instead you're sitting there and saying yeah this might cause me to under deliver but as long as all these studios are making what they want that's all that matters no 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 mm, mm. Mm, you need one of these. It seems even you understand yourself that what they want and your need to deliver quality products cannot be balanced. What consumers want matters a hell of a lot more because they're the ones who are handing you over their hard-earned $70. What, did you just sit there and listen to Colt Eastwood tell you, RK never misses? You know what I don't want to see, Phil? I don't want to see these articles written about how amazing and friendly of a boss you are. I want to see articles written about how ruthless and aggressive you are. Not about how, oh, Phil Spencer let me fuck his wife. He's so cool. He sent me a free Xbox afterwards. Go team Xbox. Your own employees don't fear you, and that's a problem. I bet you anything not a single person at Arcane is scared of losing their job right now. The fact that we have to sit down and have this talk yearly is a problem. No, it's, <laughs> but I, at first I thought your words about creative ambition of teams, you especially, I mean, you, you, you've you lived this, you've done this, um, are very well said and, and, and 
very spot on. So thank you for that. And that's why I love your voice in this community. Gay! Boo! Boo! People want games, Phil! People want games! They don't want a nice, comforting voice! Why do you listen to these jackasses? Why do you sit down with them and let them whisper things in your ears? If I was there, I wouldn't soften any of the blows! And then again, that's probably why I'm never gonna be invited or a big YouTuber. I know what it takes to reach those levels, and unfortunately, I'm not willing to slack off and throw away enough of my dignity to do it. I would take Phil into a closet and I'd make him smoke the biggest bowl of salvia to teach him a lesson. Um, you've seen, you've seen kind of ups and as anybody in the industry, we've all seen downs and, um, on the score. Yeah. We do mock reviews for every game that we, we launch. And this is like double digits lower than we thought we would be, um, with this game went through our mock reviews. Uh, and that's, what's one of the disappointing things. Like we, we would never strive to launch a game that we thought was going to review in the low 60s. Yeah! <laughs> Say what? You thought Redfall was gonna score higher? Somebody, somebody demote this man right now. Demote his ass. Move him back to catering or whatever the hell he was doing before. He's got the mentality of a janitor, not the mentality of a leader. I'm sorry, but the fact that this game passed the sniff test and was expected to actually do better critically is a problem. I don't care what none of you Xbox fanboys say. Your boy Phil Spencer seriously thought this broken, unplayable piece of caca was going to review better. If that isn't making you question his leader, right now then you all need to turn in your gamer badges hand them over doesn't this make you question every single journalist and reviewer right now why would Phil expect this to review higher is it because he knows certain reviewers out there are obligated to not take it too harshly on his products because honestly the way it is right now this should be at a zero no questions asked again Phil's expectations of this game critically doing better is probably a sign that they know people take it easier on them than they deserve well certain reviewers anyway. Xbox era, I'm looking at you. But if that's not the case, that would also imply that Phil Spencer is incapable of knowing what a bad game looks like. If expectations are this low under his leadership, then he needs to be replaced. I'm not saying fired, because I do think there are some good contributions to the brand Phil Spencer has provided, but he's most certainly not cut out to be the leader of this brand. Um, there's a lot of Twitter firing of Phil right now, which is fine. I'm, I'm way overpaid for the role I have anyway. I'm kind of at a low point right now. And I think that is the, the common frustration that I see out there from people that it's like, we're tired of hearing, wait till next year. And I know I, you know that. But I know, it's like, I know. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Get off the stage, you drunk bastard! So. We kind of left them to go work on the game. They're a very talented team. I love that team, and I still do. And I will totally bet on them to do another great game. That's it, mister. You just lost your brain privileges. Goddamn, Phil, this is why you're a cuck. This is why the ponies meme on you, and uh, rightfully so. You still love Arcane after what they just did to you? After the stain they left on your brand? After the purchase you made of them and still allowing them to publish a timed exclusive for PlayStation? You gave them everything they wanted, and this is what they gave you in return. See, this is why your whole goal shouldn't be to be best friends with your employees. Like, I understand for PR reasons you can't talk shit about them on this cast, but internally, if you're not feeling like it's time to crack some heads, then you've got a problem. I mean, at the very least, you're taking full responsibility, but how many times have you done this? If we have to keep blaming you, then we need you out, because so far, what you're telling everyone is everything is your fault, and you've been doing it for years. If you're gonna continue to be super nice to all of these studios, that delay games and they still release unfinished and broken, then you're simply not cut out for the gig. The work you've done with Game Pass and the support for PC, I like that. I do. Hell, PlayStation likes it too, because then they proceeded to copy you. But those two good things are simply not enough. There has to be a steady flow of content. But that ain't gonna happen if these studios aren't feeling the pressure. You're warming up all of Arcane's hearts, telling them how much you love them. But is that really gonna get you anywhere with the next piece of content? So when the 60 frames per second issue came up, um, we were definitely diving in. We had people from the Coalition and people from Rare and stuff looking, both teams that have done some really great work with Unreal to help us build a 60 FPS plan. But obviously that was a plan that had to be in place last fall. 
um, in order for us to really be in a position to, to have it at launch. And I, I take that as learning, as painful as it is. But as you said, you know, it's it, it's part of getting to success it, are those learnings and that diagnosis. You're still learning how to just barely publish quality games? When they brought you on as the head of Xbox, you really had no experience or knowledge about what quality games look like and when they should be published? The time for learning is over. You've been the head of this brand since the Xbox One. This company needs someone with experience in this field and not be dependent on someone like Phil who's learning to do it. I know Reggie Phils is retired, but I'm pretty sure Microsoft could open up their wallet and get that man out of retirement. Phil is simply too young and stubborn. Let's face it. I have much time with you, so I'm gonna go around the table, give everybody one final question for Phil. I'm gonna rattle off a couple quick ones with you, Phil. Of course, we talk about 60 frames, 30 frames. Should Xbox players expect a clear message this summer with Starfield with 30 and 60 frames? That's a big lesson learned as you brought up. Should we expect that answer as clear as day? Yeah. Okay, that's a great one. Uh, another one. <laughs> really? Oh boy, I have a feeling we're not going to like that answer in June when the presentation's given to us. The look on Phil's face says it all. It's gonna be 30 FPS, isn't it? Lots of people are not going to like that clear answer and he knows it. The fact that they had to put stickers on their Redfall boxes informing people that 60 FPS isn't shipped with the game is not the type of shit that they can afford to do with Starfield. And Phil is feeling the pressure. That blunt, yup. That's not a good sign. There was absolutely zero optimism behind his voice. We want Xbox to be something that people who buy our console can feel like they're a member of, obviously, who are playing on PC, who are playing on cloud, that they feel like, feel like they're full members um, of our ecosystem. Game Pass players can play um, on many different devices, and, and we remain fully committed to that. Um, we're not in the business of out-consoling Sony. Hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. Or out consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, a very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will, um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team. That's on us, not on anybody else. Oh, being Xbox is so hard. It's so hard being backed by a trillion dollar corporation. Shut up, Phil, stop it. I don't want none of this defeatist attitude near me. All right, you've got the mentality of a sore loser. Why are we acting like third place in the gaming industry is some travesty? That's like being third place in the oil industry. Boo hoo, you're raking in billions of dollars. So sad, so hard being Xbox. See, now I understand why you're not in the business of out consoling Sony. And I'll be blunt with everyone here. It's because gaming hardware is gonna be obsolete in our lifetime, let's face it. Everything's going to shift towards cloud streaming, an unavoidable future. Future. But goddamn, that doesn't mean console support is dead as we speak. We're still living in the now. You still have a large install base of console users, and they all deserve good service and good quality content. They didn't go out of their way to buy a $500 box for nothing. You can at the very least try to make their purchase of an Xbox over a PlayStation feel worth it. And if your whole goal isn't to out console Sony, you should still focus on increasing your adoption rate for your console units. As a trillion dollar company, you, you really have no room for excuses. Man, Sony and Nintendo make it hard to compete in the console market. As they should, because none of it should be easy. You can't blame your competitors for under delivering to your console users. And telling people there's no solution to this is basically telling them you're giving up. Nobody wants to hear that, especially after they just bought your console. The way you're talking makes it seem like you have one foot outside of the door. You've just given your competitors an advantage, a big one. Consumer confidence is going to be at an all-time low after hearing that. Why you said it is beyond me, but at least dishonest, Frit. Yeah, well, you can be honest without looking utterly pathetic, too. You don't have to put down your brand to make your point. That's stupid. And if you're not in the business of out-consoling Sony, 
then why are you even paying to get games removed off the platform? That doesn't make any sense. If you weren't looking to out console Sony, then there's no reason you should lock the games away from the PlayStation. You can't say, oh, we're not trying to out console them and then do everything in your power to ensure you have exclusive content just for your console. That statement is a contradiction. Again, Phil, this is why I say stop talking to Colt Eastwood. That sounds like a point he would make up. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're gonna see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome but this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people. Like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems. And their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen. When you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft, like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. It's not gonna happen. Now, this is like one of those points I kind of do agree with him on. Because if there's anything the current industry has shown me, is that it doesn't matter how many broken games you release this generation. Consoles are still selling like crazy. And honestly, it kind of lines up with what uh, Jim Ryan said about how their console exclusive titles are not enough and why they desperately needed Call of Duty. But your whole goal shouldn't be to take consumers away from PlayStation. By doing that, your whole goal should be to attract more eyes to your platform with quality content because people can always own more than one console. Do I think having quality content is gonna make Xbox outsell PlayStation dramatically? No, I don't think that at all. Do I think it'll increase the number of users on your platform though? Yeah, without a doubt. Right now you're sounding like Jim Ryan did when he told the CMA he can't make a game as big or popular as Call of Duty. It's the same loser mentality. Well, we'll never outgrow Sony doing that. Who cares? Focus on your own growth. If you guys haven't watched it yet, go watch the whole interview. I did it live on stream before uh, YouTube blocked my stream. Oh yeah, and also when they uh, age restricted my video criticizing Redfall. Why did they do that? Well, it's because I used a clip of uh, Frank Reynolds saying the six letter F word, something that's never happened to me before. So you know, it was a targeted reporting. Some angry ass Mr. Matty Plays fan or some angry ass Colt Eastwood fan did not take too kind to my video, well, which is fine. I know what I am and what I am is an asshole, but it's necessary. Go watch that interview for yourself, like I said. In my opinion, I think Phil said all the wrong things. It can all easily be interpreted as him admitting defeat. And I don't want defeat. Many were praising him for even daring to come on as if it's the bravest thing he could have ever done. When in reality, this isn't even the first time Phil has had to come on for his apology tour. There's nothing impressive about someone having to apologize every single year for the same mistake. It's not commendable. It's tiresome repetitive. This is why I'm not a console owner. My money can be spent on drugs instead. Speaking of which, I got a big bowl of hash that's been calling my name, so I'm gonna go smoke that. And you should consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing if you so choose to, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Free Congo sucks ass.